on this Lakers team, man, they are special. And I think people don't realize that they have four Hall of Famers. Everyone was talking about uh, the Warriors being such a boring team because they got four Hall of Famers. The Lakers have four Hall of Famers. The only difference is two of them are out of their prime and coming off the bench. But they still got four Hall of Famers on the squad. The Lakers have now won the championship. Um, Brooks, man, was this a cakewalk for LeBron James? Definitely wasn't. Nah, no, that, that, I won't say that at all. I won't disrespect Jimmy Butler and Pat Riley like that at all. Um, I mean, you saw what they were able to do in those two victories. I mean, one of them, they basically got Anthony Davis and everybody out there. Basically, they caught him lagging. And they were able to get Anthony Davis in foul trouble. I mean, LeBron James is the only one that was really awake to win game four or lose game three. And then game four, they gave him a battle. Game five, obviously the Miami Heat win. Jimmy Butler, he gives him a 40-point triple-double. I mean, it's incredible what he was able to do. I mean, nah. And and we, all, we know what Miami Heat is about. They, we know that they're competitive. We know that they're going to battle you tooth and nail. So to disrespect them and say it was a cakewalk, I'm not going to go for that at all. Is this, what, is this what you guys were expecting? What, Lakers winning the championship? Yeah. Absolutely. I knew, look, I'll tell you this right now, bro. The moment, and I, I shit you not, the moment Anthony Davis got picked up by, matter of fact, let's rewind before that. The moment LeBron James became a Laker, I knew they were going to win a championship. Did I think that they were going to win in 2020? I don't know about that specifically, but LeBron in 2019, I knew they weren't going to win a chip. But at some point, I knew that they were going to win. And once they picked up Anthony Davis uh, following LeBron's first season where he had the groin injury and all that, I knew that they were going to win the championship this year. There's no question. And then you ha you add the Kobe tragedy. You add um, you add the, the pandemic and all this stuff. I knew the Lakers were going to win this championship. I'm not going to call it a cakewalk, though. I'm with Brooks on this because at first I was saying, like, this has to, this probably going to be like an asterisk championship, like certain people would like to say, right? But. <coughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Pedro. So, how is it that the pandemic and Kobe's death impacted uh, the Lakers winning? Well, first of I'm all. I'm going to go after you say something too, Pedro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, first of all, Kobe. That that's that's an easy one, right? You know, they dedicated the championship to him. L.A. was his city mm -hmm. in terms of you know basketball and him being the biggest star that has ever come out of L.A. outside of maybe Magic. I would say Kobe is probably the greatest Laker of all time. So when he passed away, they dedicated everything to him. You had a bunch of talented guys who were going out there, literally dedicating this thing for him. So um, I knew that that, that was like a, a given, right? But the COVID thing. I thought, honestly, I was like, man, LeBron's getting robbed, dude. Like, he, he has to come back and figure it out with these motherfuckers. Then Avery Bradley was gone. Then Rondo was injured for a little bit. I was like, golly, man, this is going to be tough. But I figured, you know, since they had this break, I was like, you know, they have time that no other season has ever had to offer like a four or five month break for all these players. So that's why I thought maybe it might be a bit of an asterisk where it's like, it's not a full season, uninterrupted. Uh, there's certain things that, that may have helped some people but may not have helped others. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, Brooks and, and Marvin told me this. It's like, it's a great point. This is the toughest championship. And, and why is that? That's all from a mental standpoint. Physically, they did get the help of getting a five-month break physically. And I honestly, I thought that was going to hurt LeBron for some reason. I thought LeBron was going to come back like, like vacation mode but i really need to stop underestimating the mental power of lebron james and it, it, was, on, it was on full display um Please. lebron james in my eyes i for a long time especially after he lost in dallas and i really want i, I have to get into this brooks I thought that he had no killer instinct, man. You know, the, the typical narrative that he has no killer instinct because he misses shots with two seconds left on the clock. LeBron James is a fucking killer, okay? And mentally, he is one of the most locked-in basketball players ever. His basketball IQ is higher than anyone ever. Um, obviously, we don't, we don't even have to talk about his physical stature and, like, you know, just his overall skill of the game of basketball, but his mental 
it's fucking insane, dude. This guy goes into a pandemic. Um, he continues working out, posting his workout vids. Uh, it comes out, and they have... They just come out, you know, kind of... LeBron comes out a bit flat. The team comes out, you know, a little bit flat at the beginning of the bubble. But then they really started kicking it. And it really showed, bubble or not, LeBron James the kind of guy who he's thinking playoffs only, right? You know, the regular season is cool and all, but it's playoff time. Because as soon as playoff time started, my God, Brooks, LeBron James, just he locked in, man. He wiped out Damian Lillard. And, and the whole cakewalk narrative... I can't agree with that just for the simple fact that you took out the bubble MVP while he was hot. Yeah, he gave everything and he was probably gassed by the time he got there. Still the bubble MVP, still Damian Lillard, he's still CJ McCollum. You had, uh, you know, it's a solid, a solid Portland team, right? So the fact that they won a game, everyone was shook. Like, oh man, they're going to give the Lakers a run for their money. Lakers win in five, now there's some shit. Same with the Rockets, same with the Nuggets. Oh, they won one game each on, on both sides, and now uh, the Lakers are in for some trouble. That, that, they were never in any fucking trouble. It was LeBron James' mental game that really impressed me. And, and Anthony Davis, too, coming out. He didn't surprise me with anything. He's, a, he's an amazing scorer. Um, I want to say he's the best scorer on the team, but I don't even know, man. I, I think LeBron can get himself a bucket in more ways than Anthony Davis can. Um, and like, obviously his passing helps him be, be a better scorer too. But LeBron James, like I said, the mental game is crazy. This guy knows all of his opponents, weaknesses, all of his teammates strengths. He stayed locked in during all the social injustices going on. Uh, the Breonna Taylor, uh, I think he, the, the, with the whole wanton endangerment with the cop, they had to deal with all these things, the NBA stopping during the bubble, and he didn't miss a beat. You know, you've seen guys like Giannis essentially check out mentally. You've seen guys like, um, uh, even even in the Nuggets series, I think in every series, guys were checking out mentally. I think by the time Damian Lillard got hurt, they checked out mentally. The, the house guy who got suspended out of the bubble, the whole Rockets team seemed kind of like, and, you know, they checked out, too, because James Harden wasn't doing shit. Russell Westbrook wasn't doing shit. They, uh, Mike D'Antoni wasn't changing anything up. And he's gushing over this role player. And this, they just mentally checked out. And then you see uh, Jokic getting into foul trouble every night against the Lakers. And he couldn't stop Anthony Davis. Miles Plumlee Light. switching on to some shit that he wasn't supposed to. They, none of the teams matched up with LeBron mentally. And that was the most impressive thing for me. Frankel, before you for both of you guys. I'll get that. Uh, go, go Brooks, Brooks why, to... why are some people saying, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Brooks, and then I'll ask my question. Okay, all right, make sure you remember it. Um, I just want to say, for one, uh, Frankel, your first question, I was one of those guys who thought that the Clippers were going to win the championship. Mm -hmm. uh, even before the bubble started, I was like, you know, they're looking like a really good team. They're really meshing together at, at that point. Then, of course, the bubble happened. They're one of the few teams. I think it was them and the in the Trailblazers who said, "I don't want to go into the bubble. I don't want to be in Orlando for three months," you know. And then they were also, and then when this, the bubble um, was in jeopardy of, of of canceling, they also, along with the Lakers, said, "Oh, I don't want to stay around." So it seems like from the get go, they just weren't mentally checked in, um, you know. And it, it shows when you lose in the second round to the Nuggets team that really shouldn't have been a threat at all going into the playoff or not at all but you know what i mean like they weren't as big of a, as a threat as the lakers and the clippers were um and then as far as just like i said the cakewalk thing not sure at all lebron james pedro he said it himself he, and he's a michael jordan stan he's a goat michael jordan is a goat we're for gonna many get to, people we're gonna get to that specifically yeah right? we're gonna get to that someday but um no 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 today yeah. today today we're gonna have that debate today we're gonna have that debate uh-oh 